Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us for the SPIF August 2022 district rollout webinar. We'll be getting started shortly. Uh, just a reminder for everybody attending today, you will all receive an email with a copy of the presentation afterwards. Additionally, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the Q&A box uh, located in the taskbar of your screen, and we'll be answering questions throughout via writing, but also we'll have um, Sylvia answering other questions specifically out loud at the end. So feel free to take uh, advantage of that. And we'll get started in just a minute. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, as a reminder, my name is Kim Brisky. I am with Summer Corps, we're the administrator of the SPIF program on behalf of the Department of Planning and Development. I uh, welcome you today to the August 2022 district rollout webinar. We'll be running through program rules and how to apply. Uh, as a reminder, everybody who is attending this webinar will get a copy of the presentation sent to you via email. Additionally, if you have questions, feel free to put them in the Q&A chat box and we will be answering those questions. We'll be starting in about 30 seconds. Thanks so much. All right, Sylvia, I think we're going to get going. Uh, so everybody, again, welcome today to the 2022 August district rollout for the SPIF program. Uh, my name is Kim Brisky with Summer Corps, and I'm joined by some of my colleagues here on the line, including Sylvia Orozco. She is the director of the SPIF program uh, for so Summer Corps and has been doing it for, uh, I think, 17 years, I think, your anniversary coming up. So she has seen and uh, seen most uh, problems that can come up in a project, and she's a great resource for you. So I'm actually going to turn the presentation over to her, and we'll get started. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Kim, and thank you all for joining us today. So we are here to talk about the SPIF program. SPIF is an economic development grant in the form of reimbursements for structural improvements to the properties. So as Kim mentioned, Summer Corps is a not-for-profit. We are a small business lender that offers SBA loans. We administer the SPIF program as well as the Neighborhood Opportunity Fund program. So we're now in the 23rd year of SPIF. This is one of the city's longest running and most successful programs of the city of Chicago. We've helped retain and expand small businesses in nearly every neighborhood of the city of Chicago, dispersing over $113 million over to over 1,700 businesses. So please be advised hey, Nora, how's it a non-residential program the grant cannot be used for capital or operating expenses. It is specifically for infrastructure repairs. So we'll go ahead and get started with today's presentation. We will go over what is SPIF, what is our program mission, our grant parameters, how we get started. Is your business or property in a SPIF district? Which districts are open or on deck? What are the SPIF program rules? How do you apply and what is the program timeline and what are the resources available to help? We'll go over the list of August 
rollouts for the districts that are open for this current month, as well as provide information for a sample project. We'll go over these spit facts, as well as additional question and answer session towards the end of the presentation here. So at this time, I would like to present Luz Poyos, who is the owner of Pintaito Gourmet. She is a SPIF recipient that recently opened up her new cafe. So Luz, I'll hand it over to you. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Luz Poyos, and like I just said, I'm the owner of Pintaito Gourmet. Pintaito Gourmet is the home of the Colombian coffee and homemade empanadas. And we are located at 4315 North Central Avenue in Portage Park. I'm a real estate broker for 20 years, and I have always dreamed about my own coffee shop. And when I found this property back in 2015, I knew this was the right place to turn my dream into a reality. Now I had to figure out how to raise the funds. And one day I received a letter or an invitation from Summer Car to attend a meeting where they presented this SPIF program. And um, I wasn't sure what the, what was the meeting about, but I decided to go to the meeting. And after attending this meeting, finally I realized this was the opportunity I had been dreaming and waiting for. My dream and project will finally start. So this project has been an incredible experience. And even though there were very difficult times, especially dealing with contractors and design and finally the pandemic because it was in the middle of the pandemic. Uh, summer corporate resources available for the program have been an indispensable and incredible tool which made this whole process to be successfully completed. Um, I want to give a special thanks to Sylvia Orozco for her guidance and patience with through all these projects. And finally, now Pintaito uh, Gourmet is open and it's a reality. And the response of the community has been really great. Pintaito has been open for two months already. And now I feel ready to tackle this project head out. I just uh, was talking with Sylvia that I'm going to apply for additional funding to, with Summer Corps so I can um, expand the place. Thank you very much for everything. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing, Luz. Thank, Thank you, you, Luz. I was going to say, uh, we, we also had uh, Nora with the Department of Planning and Development join the call. Nora, do you have anything you'd like to say before we kick off into the meat of the presentation? Oh, I, I am sorry, I'm late. I don't want to interrupt the flow of things. I just want to say welcome to everybody. Um, I'm the director of the SPIF program for the City of Chicago, working with Summer Corps, our, our program administrator. Um, and we are thrilled to have you here for our webinar today. And uh, Please take advantage of the resources that are that you have with the SPIF program, our wonderful program administrator, Summer Corps, and the delegate agencies who will be who Sylvia will point out later in the presentation, who are really uh, wonderful resources, free resources to you to help you through the initial application process and then all throughout the uh, development process to make sure that you are able to do the project that you want. We have over 20 years of experience doing this, this program. There are some things we haven't seen, but uh, very few of them. So, and you, you do have a lot of uh, people who really want to help you get, get this done. So um, please take advantage. Thanks. Thank you, Nora. We'll move forward now with our program mission. The program was launched in 1999. The City of Chicago Small Business Improvement Fund promotes economic development by providing small businesses and landlords with reimbursable grants for permanent building improvement costs. Residential projects are not eligible. SPIF grant uses local tax increment financing revenue to reimburse grantees for the pre-approved repair or rehab 
of their business facilities or adjacent land acquisition. Summer Corps is the program administrator contacted, contracted excuse me, by the city's Department of Planning and Development. What are the grant parameters? Who's eligible? The property must be located in a TIP district where SPIF funds are available and the SPIF is authorized to accept applications. Landlords of commercial or industrial properties are eligible, as well as business owners of either commercial or industrial who own or lease their places of business. Tenants with prior written approval from property owners, as well as startups may apply with a business plan. A current city business license will be required for startups. Here we have the eligibility limits for a commercial tenant or owner occupied property on average their gross sales per year will need to be less than $9 million to qualify for the program. For landlord of commercial or industrial businesses, cumulative net worth must be under $9 million and liquidity cannot exceed $500,000 per individual. For industrial tenants or owner-occupied businesses, the requirement is that they have 200 or fewer full-time employees. All owner-occupied properties are subject to both net, both, excuse me, tenant and landlord requirements. The maximum grant amount that is allowed under SPIP for a industrial property is $250,000. The max per a single, single owner or tenant's commercial property or landlord is $150,000. 250 is the maximum that may be granted per multiple owner or tenant of a commercial property with $75,000 being the max assistance per each tenant and landlord. Applicants may receive one or more grants up to their maximum program assistance. Once this maximum is reached, the applicants will need to wait three years to reapply. Here we have the percentage of eligible project costs that can be reimbursed. If your sales or net worth fall between zero to $3 million, you'd be eligible for 90% reimbursement of eligible cost. If the sales or net worth fall between three to 6 million, you'd qualify for 60% reimbursements of eligible cost. And if your sales or net worth are between six to $9 million, you'd qualify for 30% reimbursements. All industrial projects qualify for 50% reimbursement of eligible costs. Here we have a SPIF grants calculation example. Let's say that Grace submits an application for a SPIF grants in an open district with the total eligible project cost of $100,000. She's proposing to make permanent building improvements to her existing retail shop for which she is a tenant. Grace has been in business for five years. Over the last three years, her gross sales averaged $1.5 million. Here we have a breakdown of the eligible costs as follows. So the total eligible project costs are 100,000. As a commercial tenant applicant with gross sales under $3 million, she qualifies for a 90% rebate. The city's responsibility at 90% is $90,000. That leaves the applicant's responsibility at 10% of $10,000. Keep it in mind that, you know, the financing must be provided upfront at the end of the day, She's paying $10,000 for a $100,000 project. Is your business or property in a SPIF district? You can visit our website at summercorecom slash SBIF to see if your property is in a SPIF district. Once you get to this page here, you want to click on number one to confirm your business is in a SPIF district. That will then take you here to the SPIF locator tool. You can enter the address that you have in question and it will give you detailed information as to whether the property falls within a TIP district. If it does, it will give you the TIP district name as well as the open acceptance period along with the delegate agencies in that area. Which SPIF districts are open or on deck? Eligible SPIF districts in Chicago span neighborhoods on the north, south, and west sides. Each month marks a new 30-day period in which SPIF districts with available funding 
open for applications. Notice of district openings are provided to relevant aldermen, posted on DPD and Summer Corps websites, and included in the SPIF gram. And you can visit our website for the most up-to-date list of open and on-deck districts. What businesses and organization types are ineligible to apply? This here is not a comprehensive list, but here are a few of the type of businesses that don't qualify for the program, including chain and franchise businesses, currency exchange, liquor stores, bars, schools, places of worship. Again, not inclusive, but these are the types of businesses that do not qualify for SPIF. What improvement costs are eligible for SPIF funding? We cover things such as roofing and facade improvements, components of signs or awnings, which are permanently affixed to the building, structural alterations needed for ADA compliance, including railings or ramps. If you need to also have an ADA accessible restroom, we can accommodate those renovations as well. HVAC and other mechanical systems, plumbing and electrical work, certain project related architectural and construction management fees that are related to the projects can be covered as well. Certain environmental remediation measures, permanent interior renovations, including fixtures, and the purchase of adjacent land parcels for purposes of expansion or parking. What improvement costs are ineligible for SPIP funding? So we do not cover new construction, whether it's an addition or expansion from the ground up. Any standalone minor repairs or cosmetic improvements are not eligible, but they may be covered if they're part of a larger project. Equipment related expenses such as kitchen appliances, computers, or furniture. I will add that if you do have a restaurant or a catering company, equipment related items that could be covered include a walk in cooler or freezer, fire suppression system, and also exhaust hoods. So back to the items we do not cover, including planters surrounding or affixed to the building, outdoor dining or drinking areas, including roof decks, beer gardens, outdoor patios, balconies, awnings, porches, and decks. Fencing, including pergolas, any privacy screens or any similar items do not qualify for reimbursement. Any parking lot construction or repairs, landscaping, and also work on the interior of residential units are some of the items that are not covered through SPIF. What are the SPIF design requirements? In order to receive funding, the projects must conform to design requirements, including meeting DPD's design guidelines. Projects shall also comply with design guidelines and additional neighborhood requirements as described in guidelines style guides, community plans, and other planning documents that are associated with the TIF area and neighborhood in which the property is located. Applicants are strongly advised to consult with Summer Corps and design professionals on design requirements and guidelines before drawing up plans for work. All applicants for commercial properties who are approved for a grant of $25,000 or greater shall be required to make at least one exterior improvement using at least 10% of the maximum amount of their approved grants, including but not limited to facade repair, windows and doors, exterior improvements, eligible subject to DPD's approval. This requirement can be waived at DPD's sole discretion if the applicant can demonstrate to DPD's satisfaction that no exterior improvements are needed because the improvements have been recently completed or the exterior features of the building have been well-maintained and are consistent with DPD's design guidelines. What measures are in place to ensure applicant compliance with program rules? Checks will be performed on all applicants prior to funding to ensure that they are not indebted to the city. They are current on property taxes and complying with child support laws. Each applicant will sign an economic disclosure affidavit 
the grantees will be required to sign an affidavit certifying that they will not relocate out of the TIP district or sell the business within a three-year period following disbursement of funds. In cases of SPIP reimbursement for land purchase, proof of land ownership will be required before the reimbursement may be made. How do you apply? You can download a copy of the SPIP application at our website. To apply, you must complete the application and email it to spiff at summercore.com within the designated open acceptance period. So once you get to this page, you can click here on that white button there. That'll take you to the PDF version that will be fillable to complete the application. What is this fifth program timeline? In stage one, the applicant supplies any missing information to complete their application. You're granted up to 20 days to submit these items. In stage two is the planning phase where you will be required to submit plans, bids and specifications, and also any city debts must be cured within 120 days. Please note that stage one and two must be completed before final review and project approval by DPD. If approved, you will receive your conditional commitment letter signaling you are able to begin construction. And stage three is the project construction timeframe. You're granted up to 10 months. Proof of permit or permit application, which is concurrent with the 10 month construction phase, must be submitted within 120 days following the date of the commitment letter. Stage 3.4, the applicants will be required to provide proof of sufficient funds to complete the project. Again, this deadline is 120 days following the date of the commitment letter. The applicant must prove they currently have sufficient equity to complete the project, at least 50% of the funds needed to cover the total project cost. In stage four, that will be the reimbursement process. Once the project is fully complete, we submit all, uh, all applicable payment documentations to the city. The reimbursement will be available between four to six weeks. Unless DPD has granted an extension of time, applicants who do not complete each stage within the required phase time limit will be disqualified. A maximum of two extensions may be granted with DPD's approval in the case of unavoidable delay due to extraordinary circumstances. DPD may also on a case-by-case -case basis grant a eligible application an additional amount of time to complete any program requirements. In such case, the DPD shall have discretion to determine the appropriate length of the extension. What is required to deem a project completed and receive grant funds? The construction must be completed. The required proof of payment documentation is sent to Summer Corps for review. This will include a sworn statement, invoices, canceled checks, and final waivers of lien. We will then complete a final site visit. Um, a copy of the building permit for the work that was completed will also be a requirement. So once we have all these documents in hand, we submit that, that to the city of Chicago for processing. Within four to six weeks, the grant payments will be received by check. What resources are available to help? Again, you can visit our website, summercore.com slash SBIF to access resources to support your SPIF project. We have a list of lenders that are familiar with the SPIF program that are more inclined to provide financing. We can also sign a bank assignment so that the proceeds of the grant go directly to the lender to pay off a portion of your loan. Here you also find the design guidelines, a list of contractors that previous SPIF applicants have used, as well as technical assistance providers and various small business resources. Get to know your local delegate agency. These organizations are assigned to assist small business owners in SPIP districts that are opening in August of this year. So here we have a list of delegate agencies. You can reach out to them. They are familiar with the SPIP program. They're available to assist throughout the entire process, whether you need assistance completing the application, 
you know, getting help with the contractors, whatever it may be, they are available to help. So please feel free to reach out. August 2022, Open SPIP Districts. We're currently accepting applications through August 31st at 5 p.m. The districts that are open this month include 79th Street Corridor, Belmont Cicero, Chicago Central Park, and West Irving Park. Again, the application should be submitted via email. Please allow two business days for some report to confirm receipt of your application via an email response. If you do not receive an email confirmation within this time, please send a follow-up message or call the main line at 312-360-3300. The applicants are responsible for making sure submissions are received within the open acceptance period. And please keep in mind that the application acceptance period closes August 31st at 5 p.m. Any application submitted after that time frame will not be considered for the grant. Here we have a sample project. This project is in the 79th Street Corridor Tip District. This is Brewer Coffee and Custard. There was a complete gut renovation of both the interior and the exterior of the property. Here we have before and after pictures. Well, actually, these are after pictures of the new facade here and the interior of the cafe. The work summary for this project, including the removal and replacement of concrete subflooring, we furnished and installed all rough plumbing, as well as furnished and installed the entire electrical system and HVAC systems. We framed out and drywalled the interior rooms based on their architectural plans. We demolished the storefront and also installed a new storefront with new frames, glass, and doors. Demolished the existing roof and installed a new roof and also did tuck pointing on the east and north elevations. Also replaced brick as needed. What additional documents should I have on hand to submit along with my SPIF application? While it's not required when submitting the initial application form, please note that these items are required to complete the SPIP application process. The required documents vary depending on the applicant type. This just gives you sort of a general overview of what it is that we will seek as part of the application. So if you are a business, we require business tax returns. If you own the property, we require proof of ownership. If you lease the property, we'll need an executed lease agreement. Um, so these are just a few of the things. If you know you have them handy, you know something to be prepared for because we will request this at a later date. What are the financial requirements to participate in the SPIF program? The SPIF program is a reimbursable grant. So project participants should be prepared with financing to support the permanent building improvements. Proof of financing is not required until stage three, but applicants are encouraged to contact their business lender or reach out to one of the lenders listed on the Summer Core website in a timely manner. Grantees may choose to receive their grant funds through an escrow account. DPD in its sole discretion may authorize up to three draws of funding from the escrow account to reimburse an applicant as work is completed on a project. Any fees associated with the use of an escrow account will be taken out of the grant award. Are startups or new businesses eligible? Yes, startups can apply. Startup applicants will need to supply a detailed business plan and projections of the business's income and expenses for its first 36 months of operation as part of their application materials. The City of Chicago reserves the right to impose additional conditions for funding in connection with startup business applications. If you have been in business for one to two years, mm -hmm. Summer Corps requires tax returns and projections mm -hmm. of gross sales to equal three years of data. Please note that bars, taverns, hotels, and motel applicants must have held their applicable license and been in business for at least one calendar year. Am I eligible if I live outside of Chicago? 
The important consideration is where you have your business or property. To participate in SPIF, your property must be in the city of Chicago, as the funding source comes from the city of Chicago's property taxes. If you live in another area, please call your city's planning, economic development, or community development department to see what other programs may be available to assist small businesses. What if my building has both business and residential spaces? This program is primarily for business use, but there are mixed use exceptions. For these buildings, many envelope projects such as roofing, facade improvements, and tuck pointing can be eligible. Will there be enough funds for all applicants? Each tax increment financing district that has SPIF program authorized in it has limited funds reserved for the program. If demand for the SPIF fund is greater than the available funding supply, then a lottery will be conducted to determine the order in which each grant application may be accommodated. If any surplus funds become available, they will be allocated to waitlisted applicants. Applicants for a property located in an Invest Southwest corridor shall be given priority for funding and the lottery. Applicants for a property located in a Target corridor shall be second in priority for funding and the lottery. The remaining applicants shall be provided funding if available and placed on the wait list if applicable after the applicants in the Invest Southwest corridor and the target corridors have already been addressed. Is there SPIF funding available in my district? Every SPIF area has its own budget and the city refills it if it has TIF funds available and if there's a demonstrated need for more grant money. You can email the SPIF team at spiff at summercore.com to see if there are funds in your area. We also maintain an interested parties list for funds, which you can also send an email to and we'll put you on that interested parties list. When more funding becomes available or the city allocates more funds, we will let you know. The interested party list also helps the city gauge demand for additional funds. What if you're in a TIF and it is not a SPIF? Tax increment finance is the mechanism that funds the SPIF program. If you are in a TIF district and it does not have a SPIF, you can contact your alderman. Thank you very much for your time today. Here we have our contact information for the SPIF team, as well as Nora Curry, the director on the Department of Planning and Development side. And we have two websites here, Summer Corps website, as well as the cities. And I do want to note that if you visit the city's website, it has the option to change the language to any language um, that you see fit. So if you click on the upper right hand corner, you'll have that option to change the language there. Awesome. Thank you so much, Sylvia. Uh, I just want to remind everybody that this is a great time that if you have any questions, please put them in the Q&A box right now and we'll be able to, to answer them here. Um, I always like to start off with uh, Sylvia, my main question, which is always, you know, what are the most common obstacles that you see for SPIF applicants? If you can kind of talk a little bit about that. Sure. So I would say financing because it is a requirement that you have financing available upfront to complete the program because it is in a form of reimbursement, financing and also contractors. That's another challenge there too. A lot of times contractors are very busy. Um, they may not be responsive. You know, So financing is the number one thing to make sure that you get started with that right away. You know, as I said previously, you do have to wait until stage three until that becomes a requirement, but it's never too early to get started with that process. That's great. Um, just a reminder, please use the Q&A box. We will not be uh, using the raise hand feature. Um, one question that came in is, can you uh, confirm, can SPIF be used for acquisition? In certain circumstances, it can be used for acquisition. So I'll tell you the circumstance that it can be used. So if someone owns a property and currently operates a business out of that space, if they are seeking a property or land directly adjacent to their current space, 
for either expansion or parking lot purposes, that is where the acquisition of a property or lots comes into play. So if you do not currently own your property and currently operate your business out of that space, if you're not looking to expand, then that would not be an option for you. That's helpful. And, and that is different than uh, other grants where acquisition of property in general may be included. So that's an important note. Um, so one question is, speaking of other grants like the neighborhood, a neighborhood Opportunity Fund or the Chicago Recovery Grant, if you are applying for those other grant programs, can you also apply for SPIF? Unfortunately, both programs cannot be used at the same time. You would have to make a decision on what program works best for you and pursue that program. Got it. And, and so again, just to clear up, we've got a couple more questions. Just to be clear, the uh, using of the SPIF funds is not for the acquisition of a new property or a new building, because we've gotten a couple questions to that. That is correct, but keep in mind that um, Summer Corps also offers 504 loans. So if they're looking to purchase the property for their business, they can take a look to see if 504 will work for them. That's great. Um, um, Kimberly, this is Nora. I would also like to add, um, you can actually apply to both the SPIF program and other city programs, the, um, the recovery grant or the NOF program. You can apply to all of them, but you cannot receive both of all of them at the same time or two of them at the same time. You have to choose. Um, once you, you get into them, you can't be approved for all of them at the same time. You will have to choose between them, but you can make the application to all of them. So just to clarify a little bit on what, Su on what Sylvia said. Thank you, Nora. Thanks, Nora. Um, one question, uh, I think, can you clarify a little bit? I think the difference between SPIF and some other grants is that this is not a competitive grant. So we had somebody who was saying, hey, you know, I'm interested. I, I'm, I think I'm eligible. What's the likelihood of my grant being reviewed and approved? So can you talk a little bit about why SPIF is unique in this way and, and that sort of uh, the application process in that regard? Sure. So we do not have a selection process. So that's why we do what we refer to as a lottery. So it's not your typical lottery. You know, some may say you have winners and losers, but ultimately what that process is all about is to give everyone a fair chance. So every application that we receive within that open acceptance period, we basically give them an ID number and we use a randomizer where it basically shuffles those numbers up and we start processing in the specific order that they're drawn there. So based on, you know, Every application is different. If you're within the TIP district, we'll consider it. If the work that you're looking to do, we'll consider it. Ultimately, it's up to the applicant to provide the information that's requested as part of the application and also follow through with the steps needed in order to successfully complete a program or the project, I should say. That's great. Um, so somebody had the question, can the grant be used to build unit more units on an already existing commercial property so a building uh expansion no unfortunately we do not cover any new construction nor expansions so we have a question here specifically it sounds i can't tell if this person is a landlord or the renter but the question is i have a commercial rental property am i eligible to receive funds for any exterior improvements maybe you want to touch on all the different possibilities there Sure, so we do cover exterior renovations. We cover facades, storefronts, um, masonry work too. So if you are applying as a landlord, the space will need to be leased to a SPIF eligible business. So if the tenant is not eligible as a SPIF applicant, they will not be eligible under the landlord's application either. So that would be the biggest thing there too. Actually on both ends, if you're both business and property owner or landlord, the biggest thing would be that the business itself qualifies for the program. So this is a good question. Um, you know, I think we talked a little bit about how the SPIF is a reimbursable grant, um, but the question was, are soft costs reimbursed if we have to pay before we get approval? So maybe we should talk a little bit about the conditional commitment letter, you know, sort of what that means instead of starting construction and, and how you could potentially get some soft costs um, covered within the grant. 
So we do cover soft costs if they are related to the project itself and if the project is su successfully completed. So there are a couple things that can be paid for in advance before you receive the approval from the city, which include architectural drawings and the cost of the permits itself. So ultimately, if you complete the project, we can cover those costs. Those are the only two items that can be covered or I'm sorry, that can be paid for before obtaining the approval from the city. Anything that has been paid for or completed prior to DPD's approval will not be eligible for reimbursement. And also if there's costs that are incurred, but the project is not completed, we will not cover those soft costs. Let's say for example, you obtained architectural drawings, but at the end of the day, you didn't complete the program, we will not reimburse for those architectural drawings. Got it. Um, this question is, uh, they have a mixed use property that's currently considered vacant uh, by the city of Chicago. And the, she wants to know, do I need to have blueprints ready to actually apply for the SPIF program? You do not, you do not need the blueprints ready, but we do need to have an idea of what work you're actually looking to do. And also just throwing this out there, if there's any pending litigations, any lease pendants, building code violations, those sorts of things we do not cover with SPIM. Got it. Um, there is a question in the chat wanting to know if there's a, a, a one-stop shop for all grants offered by the city. I don't know, Nora, do you have a good resource, resource for them? Otherwise, um, you know, for us, it's always going, Department of Planning Development is a great stop to learn about both SPIF as well as the Neighborhood Opportunity Fund. Um, but I want to turn over to Nora if there's a better um, resource that you could think of. Um, yeah, we're always a resource, but I would, I would first point you toward the delegate agencies that um, are in the presentation go to your local chamber of commerce first, because not only will they uh, be able to help with the city of Chicago resources, they may also be aware of any state or, I don't know if the federal government has, our federal resources are probably operated through the city at the moment, but um, they may be aware of other resources for you that are operated by other entities as well. So um, I would start with them. They are, not only will they have that kind of resource, but as I mentioned, they can also help you with the SPIF application, um, help you with the, the forms themselves, also may have um, have contractors they can hook you up with, who are maybe in a neighborhood or nearby, uh, who they have experience with and can refer you to specifically, they know their work. So um, a, one of many reasons to work with those local agencies. So. I would really recommend that you reach out to those groups. The, the folks that are in your area are um, very well experienced I'm looking at, the, at that list now. Yeah, so I just threw really that up on the screen so you guys can see. Um, awesome. Well, and just as a reminder, you will be, everybody will get an email um, with a copy of this presentation. Also, if you want to rewatch this recording, it will be posted on DPD's YouTube page. Um, let's see, did I just get another one? Um, is there an income threshold to qualify for someone who is currently employed and planning on starting a business? Is there a minimum residency requirement? So let's say you just moved to Chicago. No residency requirements. We do not have any income limits, so to speak, but we do have a liquidity cap at $500,000. So if you or any other co-owner of the business and or property exceeds $500,000, then you'd automatically be disqualified. I just put those, uh, the eligible applicants uh, page here just up on the screen for everybody. All right. I don't see any more questions coming in right now. So unless uh, either of you ladies have anything to add, I think we can wrap it up today. Awesome. Right. Thank you very much for your time. We look forward to working with you. Absolutely. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everybody. Yeah.